Hello and welcome to Always an Escrow with Serena Pell and Colby Birchin. Hello, Colby. Serena, how are you? I am fantastic. We are in for an incredible treat because we have a collaboration on our hands. Just like we love to collaborate, well, this is the definition of a real creative collab. So I want to introduce C. Julian Jimenez, a queer Puerto Rican Dominican writer, performer, and MFA holder. Julian has received awards from the New Dramatists Residency, Pipeline Theater Play Lab, Queen's Arts Council Grant, and Julian's plays have included Man Boobs, Animals Commit Suicide, Bruise and Thorn, among many others. And Julian currently holds the position of Chair of Communications and Theater at Queensboro Community College. Also joining us today is P.K. Varians, a New York artist, musician, and producer. His work spans dance, theater, and film, and he first collaborated with Julian on Oh So Fabuloso and the Barebacks, and recently released Black Wall with Rubber. Rumor has it, it is in that closet right there that all of PK's recordings happen. Welcome both of you to the show. Hello. Hi. So Serena, this is a real treat because uh, Julian and I go back to probably days when we were both in diapers. Um, I know his whole family, he knew my family the most terrific terrific human being you ever want to meet. So I'm so honored that you're on our show. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. It's so it's so great to be on the show. We've been trying to make it happen for a while. So I'm glad it's actually happening. So how did you meet? And how did you start collaborating with one another? One of my closest friends um, went to school with Steve's wife. Um, and we met that way. And then one day we were at, um, a party, um, that he was throwing and, uh, I was like, wait, you're a musician, right? You compose stuff. Uh, and he was like, yeah. So I was like, I have this weird idea (laughs) for, uh, this rock musical. Um, and I'm looking for a composer and we should get together and sort of see if this collaboration works and then it did it did yeah off and running yeah as well and that became also fabuloso and the barebacks um which we toured for two years upstate we went to upstate new york and then we went to portland oregon we were in joe's pub at the mckittrick hotel yeah so we toured in tar theater produced it um it went on for Really, for two and years. And we had started it in uh, 2014, which was the yeah. uh, the party that Julian had mentioned. And we did a few shows then, and then, then we had kind of a break for a little while, and then went Intar was um, kind of getting things back together from COVID or during COVID. Um, that's when we uh, had our kind of second coming of Oso, and then uh, did some shows outside and ended uh, the whole thing with a show, few shows at Joe's Pub. Right as the things were coming back from the pandemic, we performed Oso Fabuloso outside on 52nd Street between 10th and 11th in front of Intar so that there was the COVID, so people were outside experiencing it. We performed it every weekend of Pride Week. So anyone walking by could come and listen. Um, and it was quite an event. It was wild. The Juneteenth show was probably the best one we did. Yes, we we had a performance on Juneteenth, which was uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, and it, I think every performance but one, it rained, um, and we were we performed a rock musical in the rain, playing. He's playing guitar. I'm singing in the rain. It was it was wild. Incredible. All right, so Julian, what was the inspiration for the song Black Wall? PK, how detailed should I go into this? <laughs> Do it. Um, so here's the real thing. So we performed at the McKittrick Hotel, which is where Sleep No More happened a lot. Uh, Love Sleep No More. Are they, yeah. are they, and they're done there, right? They're done there. But when, like, we we were in there before they came back after uh, the COVID hiatus. So yes. in that, when we were able to come back, we performed before Sleep No More came back. That space is epic. 
totally epic, right? But frankly, they were not the nicest people in the world. This is the real tea. Sorry, sorry, y'all. But we, was, we spill it all. Yes, and we were uh, backstage, and um, we were taking photos backstage of us in costume and whatever. And we got reprimanded for taking pictures against a black wall. I actually have the picture uh, of me against that black wall. And we got reprimanded for it. So then I was like, we were we were at, I think you were at your apartment, right? Where I just was like, we were just, you were starting to jam. And then like, I was like, I sang a riff of the first, the beginning of it, black wall. Um, and I just, we sort of made it up on the spot. I think oh. I wrote the lyrics oh. because I had them. Saying, "Wow!" Yeah. And it just yeah. flows. Because I had that initial chord change yeah. already, and that was the first time that I played it for you. And you already had yeah. the idea in your head. It, the The entire backstage area in the McKittrick where we were playing um, is completely painted black, you know, which makes sense. But yeah, we got we got all kinds of reprimands and things during that uh, during that run. So. The song definitely is a reflection of of our experience, and it start it started that way, right? And it was like, and it was actually kind of a goof song in a weird way. And then all of a sudden, uh, I sort of reworked the lyrics, and we sort of made it more impactful. And now it, uh, a lot of people see it as a representation of like a the ending of a relationship, whether that be romantic or a professional one <laughs> with the McKittrick. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, McKittrick, but. I'm calling your ass out. So, <laughs> so Colby knows. I I would go to those shows a lot, but that space they prohibited any like you know video, photo. So I get, I understand because I remember they were strict against that. But it's just interesting that you know, given your it was your performance that they were <laughs> that they were also prohibiting it. Yeah, it was bizarre. Yeah. Okay, so tell us more about just your collaborations, right? How does that process work where you're like going back and forth and it's just riffing? How long does that take? So every once in a while, <clears throat> I'll come across someone that I work with um, in such a way that things happen. I mean, you know, you don't want to say instantly, but it's more or less instantly. Um, Julian and I can sit there and he may have lyrics. We may have nothing. And I can just start playing something and whatever it is that I play, he's able to kind of dive into. Um, I think it's a combination of our musical tastes and how they overlap. Uh, it's also just the way we work. We tend to do things, not that we don't work things out and plan things. We certainly do that. We did a lot of that with Oso, but the initial inspiration for things, we allow it to happen in a much more organic way. We've had all kinds of sessions in all kinds of places, um, you know, whether songwriting or recording. We did some tracks for Oso in the, uh, was it the costume shop, right? Julian at Queensboro? Yeah, costume shop at Queensboro. And actually when we were touring um, uh, Oso Fabuloso in Portland, Oregon. We were at an Airbnb. It was so hot. It was crazy. And that was the beginning of the concept of Rubber. Steve was like, I always had this idea of having a band named Rubber. He's like, we should record something. And in the moment, we recorded this electronic track um, that I sang into his um, headphones. We we rever you were able to reverse it and make my headphones like a hot mic, and we sang. It was like this weird, like Nine Inch Nails ish kind of song um, about Dylan Roof and how he shot up the the church uh, in that black church, and um, and we sort of just recorded it on the spot at this Airbnb, and that was the impetus for us to be like, oh, we have something here. We should do something that's not necessarily theatrical and just that's more like rock. Wow. <laughs> so do you guys have any plans on releasing an album? Yes. Uh, we were, we've been talking about that back and forth. Um, some of it has to do with our schedules. You know, Julian's got his job. I've got the nine to five job, all that kind of stuff. So our time is kind of limited for getting together. But what we've decided to do is um, 
we can release singles, right? Which is what we're doing with Blackwall. That's the initial one. And we're going to kind of keep doing that until we sort of have enough for an album and then kind of collect it and release it that way. But I think it's going to be singles right now. And there's not, there's not a huge industry focus on albums at this point from what I've seen. Um, a lot of it is singles, YouTube, Instagram, even TikTok, whatever. So we're going to kind of go in that direction for the moment. And we're on all of those. You can actually make a TikTok or an Instagram story and use Black Wall as your music for it, which is cool. Um, oh, that's awesome. That is exciting. Yeah. Wow. So you really are pushing the boundaries and with creativity. What other projects are you working on? PK and I have been talking about, you know, really trying to like gig and do some gigs and actually perform because I think we are, um, the spirit of, of us performing live really is um, great. Um, we're, we're, we're great. You know, we really enjoy recording sessions, but there's something about being live um, and performing sort of I'm just the outdoors on 52nd Street when we did Oso. There was something about that give and take about the audience. And I remember the first time I really felt I was like, oh, this is magic was we did a cover song. Uh, we did a cover of, it was just me and Steve, the rest of the band, uh, you know, just sat back and it was just just us two. And we did a cover of Future Island's Tin Man, um, a stripped down ballad version of it. Um, and we did it in the rain. And that was the first time I think we did it was on Juneteenth. Um, and it was magical. And I was like, we need to do that again. And there's something about the give and take of the audience uh, that really feeds us and really... Um, creates this sort of magic between the two of us. What I love about PK and my collaboration is that the best idea wins and not the ego. So we are we can say to each other, no, not that one. Or yes, that's it. Or yes, and all right, let's try it. But what about this? Or this, that sounds like a Brian Adams song. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm so curious, is there anyone that you both have your eye on to bring in to this dynamic duo um, for like a one-time hit? Possibly. It could be really interesting to have somebody. I mean, you know, and, you know, I've worked with Alinda Sagata from Hooray for the Riff Raff, and you know, that would be a dream collaboration one day. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I think uh the sort of the sky's the limit but we want to make sure that whoever we bring in will like really gels with the way that we work and the sound we're looking at and our sound is i feel very particularly ours but also has like a reminiscence of like the 90s and 80s electronic sound so yeah it's like an amalgamation of of those influences for us okay so Julian and PK, how can our followers find you? Where should they listen and, you know, really consume all that you're putting out there? Well, they can start with YouTube. We have the uh, lyric video for Black Wall out on YouTube now. So please watch, like, and subscribe as it goes. Yep. And we are rubber is our Instagram handle. Rubber was taken. So we, we did. We are we are rubber, which is on Instagram. And that's also our Facebook page. Um, so our Facebook page, if you look up rubber, uh, if you look up we are rubber, you'll find us easier. Um, and we will be posting links to the, any lyric videos and music that we end up streaming. Um, and then also to this podcast, we'll be linking this podcast so that everyone gets to know who we are and uh, and gets to see uh, this, you fabulous people. I can't thank you both enough for coming on the show. Thank, thank you. you so much.